Okay guys, this is the battle video you've been waiting for between the Snapdragon 888 versus the Exynos 2100 for the Galaxy S21 Ultra. And this will be all about gaming, so let's jump in. Hey guys, welcome to this video. This is Thunder E again on the channel and thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button when you do, notification icon, you will be gifted with videos like this where we talk about gaming. Now, the Galaxy S21 Ultra is officially out. I finally got my hands on the Exynos version and I asked you guys a simple question. What kind of games would you like me to see, especially graphically intensive games? And you guys spoke and I added a few more to this list. I took one out, which is Fortnite, because honestly, it's not been updated yet. So I'm taking that out of the picture. But some of you asked for Evil Lands and that was the new inclusion to my list. But before we get into that gaming section, let's look at, take a look at both devices. The Galaxy S21 Ultra in black is the Snapdragon 888 uh, version, the US version, while the Phantom Silver is the Exynos 2100. They look very similar. There are no differences on the devices except just a slight detail on the back of the device where you do have the Samsung logo uh, on both. But on the Exynos version, you have the IME number written on there and a few other things, which I guess is just what you have to do in Europe. But either way, both devices are the same. They both have, uh, of course, Q, uh, QHD plus displays. And those displays are 120 Hertz variable refresh rate, which is something we can see clearly on both displays and it is nice to see. Now, in terms of performance, this is where we're gonna take a look at some of the benchmarks first before we get into some gaming. So let's start off with our very first set of benchmarks. So the very first benchmark is 3D Mark, which we're gonna be running on both devices uh, with, of course, the Snapdragon on my left and the Exynos on the right. And when it's all said and done, the scores are very close, but the Exynos has the edge. 5,737 compared to 5,702 with an average frame rate for the Exynos at 34.4 frames per second and 34.1 frames per second, which seems that look, they're pretty much close together. Now we do know that the Exynos uh, device clocks at a higher clock speed, about 2.8, while Snapdragon is clocked at 1.84 for the cores. But does this mean that the Exynos is now finally better? I don't think so, but does it mean the Snapdragon is less? Not really. Again, those numbers are really, really close. Now, let's take a look at our very first game because, of course, benchmarks don't tell you all the story. And I'll start off with, of course, tried and true trusted Call of Duty Mobile. Now, Call of Duty Mobile is something that runs really well on a lot of devices, and I shouldn't see any kind of differences. Now, before we start, I use a benchmark tool called GameBench. I like to use GameBench because it allows me to go in and see a lot of things. Definitely use them if you want to. The link is down below. So with GameBench, looking at Call of Duty Mobile on the Snapdragon 888 device, we have an average of 60 frames per second, uh, which is pretty nice, and FPS stability is 99% while on the Exynos version, it is also the same at 60 frames per second with FPS stability at 99%. We also see that on the Exynos version, the RAM usage is up to 1200 megabytes per second, while on the Snapdragon version, the RAM usage is at 1000 megabits per second. So slightly less, but again, very, very similar in terms of performance. So that is actually pretty cool. Now, let's move on to a game that is more intensive in terms of uh, GPU actualization. That is PUBG Mobile. And of course, with PUBG, we always use various settings for the game. Now, one thing I did find, and hopefully it changes, but it gives the Snapdragon version an edge, is that you cannot play PUBG at ultra, Ultra HD. That is just not possible right now on the Exynos version. They said an update will be coming, so we'll have to wait and see. So I couldn't test that, but with, of course, the Snapdragon version, it does run PUBG at that, and it runs at uh, 40 frames with 100% FPS stability. So that's something the Snapdragon version can do. Currently, the Exynos version cannot. But we still have to compare them. So Smooth Extreme is the setting we went for. And with Smooth Extreme, uh, the Snapdragon version did a solid 60 frames per second. 
99% FPS stability, and uh, the average uh, memory usage is 906 megabits per second. Now, when we move over to the Exynos version, again, 60 FPS, 99% FPS stability, and, and the RAM usage is 1,082. A little higher again on the memory usage on the Exynos version, but it still seems that it can run the game at that setting quite well. So that is definitely good to know. Now, as we continue, the next thing we want to do is run another benchmark test. And this time it is Geek Benchmark 5. So with Geek Benchmark 5, we can see the difference between the clock speeds for both the Snapdragon and the Exynos version. And how does that actually compare when we actually run those benchmarks? So in single core performance, the Snapdragon is at 1,126, while the Exynos is at 1, uh, 1,112, while the multi-core performance of the Snapdragon is 3,487 and the Exynos is 3,467. So what does that mean? Again, it's really close. So to me, this tells me that Exynos has closed that gap in terms of benchmark performance matrix. And what we've seen so far gameplay wise, it's also kind of matched that as well. So as far as I'm concerned, they're pretty much close in terms of uh, performance, but and you guys have seen those numbers, but I know you guys care about performance in gaming so how does genshin impact actually perform on both devices let's jump in and check that out so we'll start off with the exynos version this time and this is where we saw some interesting uh performance differences so we set genshin at its max performance at 60 fps everything at high for both and on the exynos version it ran an average of 50 frames per second 96% FPS stability. The RAM usage was at 2,000 uh, gigabytes. So basically two gigs of RAM was used for this, which was quite different. And as we move over to the uh, Snapdragon version, Snapdragon ran Genshin at 60 FPS with 100% FPS stability. So there's a difference there in performance. Not that much, it's 10 FPS if it's something you care about, but again, you know what, we want to run games at 60 FPS, so that actually shows me that there's much more difference. And again, the RAM usage is much lower at, at 1,577, so 500 megabits of RAM less in usage. So again, performance is more balanced and also better on the Snapdragon version, but the Exynos version is not far off. Now, before we get into Evil Lands, I want to talk about temperatures. This is where I am shocked this year with, with Samsung. Usually, Samsung has some really good thermals on the devices. In the past, I've never passed 104 degrees. With both devices, I got to 109. Now, the Exynos actually ran a little hotter at some points, but the average is around 109 degrees, uh, which I just found really shocking. It got to close to like 110. 12 uh, for the Exynos version, while the Snapdragon was like 100, 910. Again, this is something that I don't know what's happening with Samsung here. It just runs too hot for me. Maybe it's because they're just trying to push it as much as possible. But temperatures beware, because this I found intriguing while playing Evil Lands, which is a suggestion you guys gave, so I want to thank you for that. And when we move to Evil Lands here, we also see some clear, distinct differences again. So Evil Lands on the Snapdragon 888 version, I got an average FPS of 80, 81 frames per second with FPS stability of 88 and uh, RAM usage of 1200. So it ran above 60 frames quite well. Uh, this game can, can do 120 frames, but it's really hard. It's a gorgeous game, by the way. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's one that you should get, definitely check out a play. Now on the Exynos version here, we see an 89 FPS average and FPS stability at 96%. So much better FPS stability here. And RAM usage is 1400. So here, this is where the Exynos does, does a bit better in terms of FPS stability over the Snapdragon, but the FPS range is still the same. It's roughly around eight FPS difference. Although again, what we've clearly seen across the board is that the RAM usage is the same across the board. Now, I also wanna talk about one other benchmark tool which you've probably seen throughout the video, and this is Game Plugin. I wanna thank you guys for also mentioning this. This is a built-in plugin uh, for uh, Galaxy devices. You can get in the Galaxy Store that shows you the FPS. You can also customize the things you want to do on the side, and you can also have the FPS stated on any side of your screen. Now, this is a good tool to use because it also confirms what I'm seeing here with Game Bench. 
Now, one more game you guys also mentioned was uh, Sky. Sky is a fun game, and I was actually hooked to play this game for quite a bit. Now, in terms of FPS range, this game is locked in at 32 frames per second for both the Snapdragon and the Exynos version, so you're really not getting any difference here. But it's a lovely game for you guys to check out. Now, when it comes to emulators, some of you are asking, is there a difference between the Snapdragon version and the Exynos version? We tried two emulators, Redream, and of course, PS2 emulation. We Redream, it was fine. They both ran at 60 FPS for both the Snapdragon 888 and the Exynos version. And when we played God of War 2 on both the Snapdragon and the Exynos version, they both ran at 60 FPS and the games played pretty well. I did play touchscreen on the Exynos for, on the Snapdragon version. The Exynos, I actually used my Razer Kishi, but with either, they were both 60 FPS. So if you're using emulators on both, you're gonna get some really solid performance. So what are my final thoughts, right? What is the gaming difference between the Snapdragon version and the Exynos version? Honestly, they're pretty much the same. I mean, there are some differences here and there. We do know PUBG currently doesn't have Ultra HD, but I think that's just an update. And we do know there is a difference in Genshin Impact in about 10 FPS. And also, there's also a slight difference with Exynos version have a higher performance, slightly higher performance in Evil Ads. So it means they are roughly around the same with just the margin of difference. So if it was a plus or minus five, then it's really just close by a five FPS difference with the Snapdragon taking the slight edge. So if you are in a region right now that you are looking to pick up a Galaxy S21 Ultra, the Exynos version, I can tell you from the benchmarks I'm seeing here while gaming, you're getting the same performance as we are getting here in the US. I think a lot of people would like to hear that and that's pretty good. So I think gaming wise is pretty much close together. In terms of battery life and battery performance, I know a lot of you asked me to do battery drain tests, which is something I don't like to do and I don't think anybody does it well. I can tell you that battery drain with my most janky battery drain app, uh, which is called Generic Battery Drain, basically came out to them draining at the same time. So it both drained around three hours and 30 seconds just using the application there. And it seems like from all I've seen from other people is that they both have the same equivalent battery life. So you should be happy with that kind of performance. 